All right, uh, we're doing part two of the uh, update for the war in Iran, the psychic aggression of the war, an article that I wrote uh, probably, <laughs> probably four or five years ago now, maybe even longer than that, after I had a vision that was inspired by a conversation that I had had with a friend when he and I were talking about how we thought uh, a potential conflict could happen, because there was a lot of war talk that was going on about uh, whether the United States was going to attack uh, Iran back uh, in 2006 and 2005 and 2007. And just for the last, you know, many years, we've talked about how it would go. Uh, being a bit of a mystic and psychic and a guy who gets visions and strong feelings and all those various different things that happens when you uh, go through the whole psychic school, um, I actually had uh, experienced a couple of uh, visionary experiences that seemed to relate to how a conflict would begin. Uh, I wrote that up in an article that I called War in Iran, A Psychic Impression of a War, and uh, then had to listen to probably now about a million different people who explained to me why uh, there was never a chance that there was going to be a war with Iran. Uh, and then another million people who told me that uh, if there was a, a war that ever occurred, it would <laughs> it would not have uh, the United States as uh, kind of being attacked. It would have uh, the United States as being the aggressor, uh, which, yeah, that's a relative term as to how you would want to call another nation an aggressor. But in my prediction, I said, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, I felt that the Iranians were actually going to be the ones who would strike first as a preemptive attack, because they would believe that they were going to be attacked themselves, probably with some truthful justification. They probably would feel as though they were going to be attacked, and very likely they would be. And uh, instead of waiting, they decided to strike first, feeling that that's in their best interest, as indeed it would be, <laughs> because militarily they would come out better for having done so. I had to, you know, debate with several people on this, uh, you know, for the last few years. Uh, largely, it was mostly ignored as uh, even a possibility that it could happen, and certainly no one believed that the idea that the Iranians might actually be the ones who would uh, uh, initiate any kind of conflict. However, in the last uh, six, eight, you know, nine months, a year or so, the Iranians have come out and made some statements that were very much indicated that, yes, they don't reject the idea of attacking first. Uh, and most recently, in September of uh, 2012, they have uh, had some members of their command structure who have actually come out and said, in the event that we feel a war is going to occur, we will strike first. And there are, you can do searches on the internet and find those all over the place. The, uh, some updates I wanted to do regarding, uh, it's hard to explain from a, from a mystical and psychic kind of you know, idea of just, you know, coming from that standpoint, it might be difficult to explain how events can seemingly have points and positions in time where there's greater chances that they will occur, will occur, but when they don't occur, it doesn't necessarily mean that they disappear. Almost like something will kind of bond to the surface, it's a possibility that it will become a little island in this little, you know, water, you know, but in, it doesn't. It kind of sinks back into the water, but it rises again at times. During this uh, initial time, I think that there was a good chance that a war would have started several years ago. But for whatever reason, circumstances just weren't right, and it kind of sank back down. It became a, kind of became a not necessarily an emergent event. But that doesn't mean that it disappeared entirely. So my prediction is being updated. I'm updating it now to explain some of the subtleties of, of how I think that things have changed. Initially, in my original prediction, I said that I thought that there was no chance of there being, or that it didn't appear as though there were going to be any uh, invasions of other countries by Iran during any kind of conflict. It would basically just sit within its own territory, and it would fight whatever American planes that would be coming at it, any American soldiers or ships or anything. Uh, it would do a, a sneak attack and it would sink somewhere between, I think I said, seven and ten of our ships and it would damage like another 
you know, you know, 10 or 12 or 14, something like that. I had to go back and read my own prediction about what I actually said. But a real devastating day. I mean, a dark day, uh, indeed, a very sad day. And uh, I would encourage anybody who might have, you know, the, the 10 or 15 people who actually look at my video here, if you have relatives who are in the, in the Navy, particularly serving in the Persian Gulf, I always, for the last year or two years, I've, I've tried to encourage naval people to be extremely vigilant when it comes to their service in the Persian Gulf and not to drop your guard. If there are any kind of survival vest, uh, swimming gear, oxygen tanks, uh, firefighting equipment, anything that your job might actually entail you to actually look toward the safeguarding of your vessel, uh, I encourage and have encouraged that at every opportunity that I've been given that uh, just be vigilant, just expect that at some point you're going to be attacked. Now, maybe that's something they do on a regular basis, and maybe this is you know, nothing that I have to remind them about in doing their duty. But I never nevertheless, I get the feeling occasionally that there may be a laxitude or a, a certain malaise, perhaps, that seems to, when I try to examine the situation psychically, I get the idea that there might be some degree of uh, occasional inefficiency that's there and that uh, there's uh, kind of a mindset change by actually help uh, to save some lives. Might save a few ships, might save a few people who end up in the water if they were ever attacked by the Iranians. So I encourage you, if you have any kind of relatives in the military, I don't think it's alarmist at this point in time to actually say, look, there could be a conflict coming. Uh, try to make sure that you do everything you have to with the idea of saving as many people as you can. Uh, a strong feeling has come up about the invasion of other nations. The idea that uh, Afghanistan could be invaded is now actually a possibility, a very low possibility, but it is now becoming a significant, a significant enough possibility psychically that if there was a war between uh, Iran and the United States, uh, an invasion of at least the western part of Afghanistan now becomes possible, maybe with a million or two million men, something like that. From, a, from Iran. Uh, another nation, though, that seems as though it absolutely is a strong idea that it could be invaded is the nation of Azerbaijan. And it took me the longest time to figure that that wasn't the way that I, I heard the description of it. The description I heard was the nation to the north and west of Iran. And I had to look at a map to find uh, the nation of Azerbaijan. <laughs> and when I saw it, I was like, why there? And I got uh, another flood of information that kind of came through that said that uh, it was part of a it would be part of an agreement that's been reached between Iran and another nation to where they would actually uh, attempt to make a disruption there as kind of part of the great game, I guess as uh, some of the you know uh, espionage writers have said. Uh, but the, it's important for them to actually try to, to impact oil as much as they can. So when I started Looking at the nation of Azerbaijan, I found out that it actually has uh, a number of oil pipelines and things that run through the nation, and uh, it's a very important uh, nexus point for the transport of oil out of the Caspian Sea. And any war that happens, the leverage points that the Iranians are definitely going to be wanting to use against the United States are going to involve uh, the interruption of oil. That is going to be their their primary strength, and I think that it will actually be. Uh, they attack first, they sink our fleet, they attack several of the pipelines both in uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar in uh, a lot of those other nations over there, the United Arab Emirates, they, they do missile attacks, they do sabotage bombings, they do things like that, that will actually impede the, uh, the movements of oil. And I think that that's going to uh, have a fairly dramatic impact upon uh, how the United States actually is able to kind of weather the storm. We, we will have, I think, we being the United States, will have enough oil to meet our needs. Uh, there will be a period of disruption, and during that period of disruption, before we kind of get our act together, there could be fairly moderate to severe social disruptions happening within the United States. But, you know, just kind of in the first, uh, I think I'm running out of 10-minute YouTube time again. All right, hold on.